is 15 minutes, the optimal exposure time for maximal red light therapy benefits. According to a recent podcast with Dr. Roger Shayholt that currently has over 5 million views, that appears to be the case. He says after about 15 to 20 minutes of this type of light in that type of setting, there is a switch that turns on and, it, and, you, and you don't need further stimulation. Further stimulation doesn't do anything more. It's a, it's a very bizarre thing. You would think that the more light that you gave, the more the effect would be. It's not. After about 15 minutes, it, it, there's something that changes in the mitochondria. Now, this is something I've been trying to articulate for years, that you can't just use high intensity and recalculate your exposure time to get the right joules per centimeter squared. That it takes a certain amount of time for light to make its effect on the mitochondria. And what he's seeing is about 15 to 20 minutes is what he sees. And then further exposure to light after that has diminishing marginal utility. But it seems as though just for some reason, just a few minutes, maybe 10, maybe 15, maybe longer, it's hard to say. And obviously we need studies to look at that. But the effect that he is seeing, it's like almost the switch turns on after a certain amount of time. It's not like this linear relationship and the effect can last for days. So in these recent interviews, they're often talking about the exposure time as the key aspect of dosing and not so much the energy or the intensity. And so we can now deliver an effective dose. Again, remember, it's a switch um, at a much lower energy and get a as good a physiological effect as if we give a high energy. I don't know where this switch is. I don't really don't know where it is in terms of well, I know where it is in terms of time. I don't know where it is in terms of energy, but these energies are very low. They're very low. But the issue is that when you deliver the energy, you're not, in this case, you're not delivering other wavelengths. The light is doing something. Let's say the light is releasing an enzyme, okay? okay? And it's a trigger, it's a switch. I can give you a broad range of intensities of infrared light, and I'm still getting the same effect. And of course, when they're talking about 15 minutes, this is with very low intensities, usually less than 40 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Because as a lot of consumers are finding out the hard way, if you try to expose yourself to a high intensity panel for 15 minutes, you're gonna overheat yourself, you're gonna feel overstimulated. So, you know, you don't have to, I see, I see these massive panels that cost three or $4,000 of red light that people purchase. Mm. You're probably wasting your money. You're really ah, wasting your money. People hate that. <laughs> you are wasting your money. And so as Dr. Shayholtz understands, most clinical grade red light therapy treatments, you don't feel any heat at all because the intensity is so low. They put the jackets on and they randomly randomized the sign which jacket was turned on and which jacket was turned off. It was blinded because the light coming from this jacket could not be seen by the human eye. It wasn't even enough to produce enough heat. And so this represents a game-changing paradigm shift of how we even view dosing of red light therapy. I can tell you, for instance, in talking to Glenn Jeffrey, he's been studying the mitochondria now for decades. And he's told me this on several occasions, whether the mitochondria is in a Drosophila fly, if it's in a bee or in a human, after about 15 to 20 minutes of stimulation, you're going to get the sort of the maximal benefit after that period of time. Before we kind of considered it follows some sort of dose response curve, that more dose leads to better responses. And then you've got the biphasic effect that even more doses, you start to fall off on those effects and even get into detrimental regions or inhibitory regions that can be used therapeutically for different applications. But as Dr. Roger explains, it's there's no dose response. You see him kind of showing his hand as kind of a flat response, as that's how an engineer or scientist would think of it, is that if you change a variable and you don't get a different response, it's a flat response. You get a plateau of effectiveness. So we should maybe redraw our dosing diagrams to look like this below of having, once you've reached that 15 minute mark and just adequate intensity and energy, you don't need much, then you're getting 100% effect for a wide range of energies and intensities and exposure times. They find it very, very hard to understand a relationship between cells and light. And, you know, they just don't get the idea of a switch. You know, you know, if you wake up, you've got a headache, you know, two paracetamol is better than one. Don't take five because your liver will pack up. But, yeah. you know, there is that, there is that, everything has to have a dose response curve. Sometimes there isn't a dose response curve. Something happens, 
you do something and it's a switch, but they're not that many switches in the body. A lot of things are dose responses. And so that way we don't need to worry about, oh, we need to overdose and we need to tolerate these high doses uh, just to get that 100% effect. It's like, no, once you flip on that switch, you're at the 100% condition. That's like how a switch works is 100% on, 100% off. So all we need to do is get the minimum effective dose to get that switch on and then you're getting 100% benefits. There's no dose response curve in red light treatment. So it's a switch. You need to put enough energy in to flick the switch. So the most consistent way they seem to be able to turn on this switch is with 15 minutes of exposure time. Again, not worrying about having high intensities, not worrying about having high energies. Again, that can be limiting because you're gonna get overstimulated anyway. All you need is very low intensities. One of their recent studies only used nine milliwatts per centimeter squared. So if we wanna focus on optimal red light therapy dosing, we don't need high intensity, we don't need high energy, we just need adequate exposure time.